it seems like both the United States and the European government are just hell-bent on going after crypto as hard as they can. They sort of are going after crypto to achieve the same thing, but they're going at it from different angles. The United States angle is to go after cryptocurrencies by declaring them as security. So they say that the cryptocurrencies themselves are unregistered products that should be registered and regulated by the government. And not having done this means that they're in violation of some sort of rule. So basically, by going after them in the courts, they can then usurp billions of dollars from these organizations, uh, either with the hope of completely ending them, causing them to go bankrupt, or at least siphoning as much money from them as possible. So in the latest assault on cryptocurrencies, it seems that the SEC and Gary Gensler, uh, well, they're not going to stop anytime soon. Now they're going after DeFi, right? They're going after the largest decentralized exchange in the world, Uniswap, as far as the last time I checked. And they've served them notice saying that a lawsuit is coming right that they have engaged in the sales of unregistered securities and even though uniswap itself the platform itself is supposedly decentralized yeah it's a decentralized exchange but the organization that's behind building the product is an entity that can be sued right it's not a completely de uh, decentralized uh, conglomerate of I don't know, users and validators or whatever. So that's huge and that's terrible because if Uniswap loses to the SEC or, you know, throws in the towel, what have you, then best believe that it sets a precedent for all the other swaps or the pancake swaps, the sushi swaps, the monkey swaps, the whatever else swaps, right? Even a lot of the DeFi products, like those from Crypto.com, uh, from Coinbase, and all of those, would then be subject to this precedent. So that's one angle. In the EU, what they're doing is they're going after the users of the platform. So while the United States government is going after the actual product, you know, the cryptocurrencies themselves, in the EU, the government is attacking the users. So what they've done is, you know, they're legislating around what we can and can't do, what we can and can't access, how much of our money we can spend on crypto, how much of our income can be invested in, quote unquote, risky assets. Uh, they're harnessing all manner of existing legislation around money laundering and consumer protection right now some of them are needed and appreciated actually from my point of view some people think the government should just sit the whole thing out but there are some you know laws <laughs> that need to be adhered to by some of these companies and you know some of these laws could in theory have prevented something like you know ftx and all those kind of crazy things happening in the first place but Kind of makes you wonder those laws did exist but did nothing to stop Do Kwon from crashing the market and stealing billions and billions of dollars and pounds from European citizens and American citizens alike. Like I already talked about in some of my videos, they have attacked uh, a lot of DeFi platforms because we're unable to access them because of money laundry laws. They've been blocked by many of the ISBs. People that access them have had to use alternatives. You know what I mean? Technical alternatives. Um, also, they've talked about legislation outlawing unregistered self-custody wallets, right? Which will be implemented over time. Now, this hasn't made the cut, but they went as far as trying to limit the actual dollar amount, right? Or euros amount or pounds amount that we could spend 
on crypto. That's how extensive the EU government was trying to get. Look, but fortunately, um, you know, common sense prevailed. I'm sure some members of the European Parliament probably stood up and said, well, this is a bit of an overreach, even for our standards. Uh, for instance, look at this bit of legislation that didn't make it through. EU scraps proposed $1,000 payment limit for self-custody crypto wallets. The European Union's new anti-money laundry laws limit cash and some crypto transactions, but proposed non-custodial wallet limits didn't make the final cut. As you can see, this article itself has been updated for its inaccuracy, stating that the new EU laws banned anonymous crypto transactions. That's not true. But they did attempt to limit how much we could spend. Not even spending, the transaction. So to put a limit on how much you could actually move to the dollar value of 1,000 euros, which works out to roughly $1,000, right? Your euro and the dollar are almost um, at par at the moment, right? So the majority of the European Parliament lead committees have scrapped that 1,000 euro limit on cryptocurrency payments from self-hosted crypto wallets as part of a new anti-money laundry law. The earlier proposal that saw businesses limited to 1,000 euros if using a self-hosted crypto wallet to transact was removed along with a provision that aimed to implement identity checks on self-hosted wallets receiving the funds. Isn't that crazy? However, crypto exchanges called crypto asset services providers in the EU must, must perform customer due diligence, identity verification checks on users to carry out business transactions of at least 1,000 euros. So they were going to outright block transactions that are greater than 1,000 euros. But now if you want to make transactions that are 1,000 euros or more, then there's a mandatory KYC probably advanced KYC, right? Luckily, if you're doing your own wallet to your own wallet, then nothing can stop you at the moment. This is only if you're transferring from, you know, centralized exchange to a non-custodial wallet, say from Binance to your trust wallet, for instance, right? The law works alongside the crypto-focused markets in crypto assets regulations, laws, and others to cement existing prohibitions on caps from providing accounts for anonymous users or for privacy coins such as Monero. So I'm sure you've heard that Monero has been delisted in a lot of these exchanges because the EU is frowning on anonymity and privacy when it comes to money. Okay, again, this has been justified by the anti-money laundry movement. There are upper limits, as you can see, $10,000, but at least that is way higher than the $1,000. Even though in this bull market, $10,000, that's not going to mean much to a lot of people. As the cryptocurrencies that people hold begin to pump, people are going to see, you know, six digits, seven digit gains, and they're going to need to move this money around. So it's going to be a challenging one this time. Um, Getting money in and out of exchanges is going to be troubling and difficult in Euro, in the Eurozone. Uh, one would have to at least be completely open to the government. Uh, if you are, then that's fine. But even if you are open to the government, then you're open to the other law that checks your means and income and all that sort of stuff and actually goes in and blocks you from doing trades that exceeds 10% of your income, for instance. Now, each region of the EU is different. It's definitely different than the United Kingdom because we're not literally in the EU anymore, but we still sort of adhere to some of the European directives, sort of, or at least our laws mirror those that are in the EU for now. And for people in the United States, unfortunately, what's probably going to happen is as the SEC makes it really difficult for you guys to do DeFi trading, these DeFi companies are going to start to leave the United States and block United States users. And a lot of the benefit is going to be moved to places like Asia, like Dubai, like South America, Caribbean countries, and Africa that show a favorable side to cryptocurrencies and DeFi generally. Not financial advice, do your own research, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.